Welcome back. In this video we are going to be sharing a few multiplication games. There are three games in this video. The first two games are ideal for developing time table recall and the final game is a little bit more challenging. Connect for multiplication is very similar to bingo but allows you to personalize exactly which facts you want the children to practice. Multiplication duel very similar to Jewel, the game that just keeps on giving. And Mixed Up Multiplication is the more challenging game which allows us to do two digit by one digit multiplication. Just one very quick note, the correct vocabulary for the answer to a multiplication question is product, as in the product of 8 and 7 is 56, or the product of 8 times 7 is 56. These games are a great opportunity for children to practice this language. The first game we're going to look at is Connect for Multiplication. This game is really similar to Bingo. In order to play the game, you're going to need 16 bits of paper. We use post-it notes. A bingo board, which you can draw by hand or you can print out. Just a very simple 4x4 four four table, but space is big enough to write numbers in. Some counters, or scientific workers' counters. We've used coins, pens or pencils. A multiplication grid is really helpful, it's not essential, but it is helpful because we want the children to practice and rehearse their facts accurately. Practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order to play this game is pick some time table facts that we're not so great at, that we want to practice. So it's normally the six, sevens or the eights because they tend to be the ones that children struggle with most. Okay, I'm going to write those questions on these post-it notes. So, 6 times 6. Eight times three. Okay, so we've wrote down the 16 facts that we want to practice. What we need to do now is take each one of these and write an answer somewhere on our bingo grid. Each player has their own bingo grid and you can put the answers in any place you want to. Because the same as in normal bingo, we're aiming to connect for either in a row, in a column, in a diagonal, or shall we have the four corners as well? Yeah, sure. first person to do them wins. So we're going to take the questions, we're going to write the answer anywhere we want on our grid, and then we're going to put the piece of paper with the question on, we're going to screw it up, and we're going to put it in a bowl. Okay, so we're just going to carry on writing the answers to our questions anywhere on our bingo boards. So seven times four, 28. We're going to put 28 on our board, we're going to screw that up and we're going to pop that in the bin. Okay, so our boards are ready. We've got our numbers in different places. We've picked where we want to put the answers to all of these questions. We've got some counters so we can use the boards again. And we've got a multiplication grid, which is just really helpful because we don't want to practice incorrect facts. So just in case we need to check anything, we've got a multiplication grid as well. I'm going to pick a fact out, totally random, what's it going to be, what's it going to be, what's it going to be, it's on the other side. 6 times 3, so 6 times 3 is 18, 18. so I'm going to counter, cover up 18, remembering we're trying the first person to connect for win, so we'll put that to the side because we've done that one, next. 8 times 5. 8 times 12 is 96. 96, 96. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing pretty well, aren't you? Right, so pick. Seven times 
seven times six. Forty-two. Forty-two. I always have to check that one. I always have to do seven times three and then double it. Forty-two, forty-two, forty-two. 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 Forty-two, forty-two,
pause the video here if you want to read them. Okay. Once you've cracked a simple version of Jewel, you can play a little bit more of an advanced version called Multiplication Mix-Up. You've still taken out, still only got the ace through nine in the pack. Aces are still value of one. In this case, I'm going to give each of us three cards. What we can do is arrange our three cards in whichever way we think is going to give us the highest product. So we can make two digit number 88 times 4, or I could do 84 times 8, or 48 times 8, whichever way we think is going to get the highest product. Can you bring yours just in a little bit, Amber, so that we can see? I can see your seven. So you're going to go for 93 times seven. Yeah. Okay. And you think that's going to be, and I'm going to go for, is it better to have, it's definitely going to, the only question I have is 84 times eight, is that higher than 88 times four? Um, I think 84 times 8 is higher. I think 84 times 8 is higher because... I think it's better to have the higher numbers on the outside. Okay. So we've got bits of paper. We can figure out our calculation using whichever strategy you want. So now we've figured out the answers to our calculations. So the product of 93 times 7 done with a long multiplication cell, 651. I've gone for a slightly different method, used the distributive law, and I've got 672. So, which is the highest product? Yours. Mine. You can't even draw them. They always win. Three cards, yeah? Yeah. Arrange them into a two digit, oh god, one. <laughs> two digit by one digit, which you think is going to give you the highest value. Can you that? And test them now. Are you going to test them out? You've got a little theory, have you? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm definitely not going to go for 14 times 8, and I'm definitely not going to go. For 84 times 1. So the 41, 41 times 8. I think 41 times 8. Okay, solve it well. using any method you want. Okay, so we've done our calculations. Mine's a bit scruffy down here, but you can see what's going on. Product of 66 times 9 is 594. 594. Yeah. And the product of 41 times 8 is 328. So who's won this time? So I finally won. <laughs> you finally won. <laughs> yeah.